Good morning. Uh, good morning, Lubega, Siddikenu, and Roslyn. Thank you for uh, joining class. We'll begin. So can I ask uh, Lubega, can you please lead us in prayer, please, this morning? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this wonderful day, another chance to breathe in the world of the living. But we also thank you for the students and the lecturer who has already joined the class, ready to teach us from the foundation, Lord. Lord, we are here not because of our mighty, we are here because of your will and the grace in Jesus Christ. But again, we put this lesson into your hands. Let us be here to understand so that whatever we learn can be used in order to expand the kingdom of God. We do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and everybody says, Amen. 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 Thank you, Lubega. Um, so uh, on Wednesday, we began, uh, we looked at Deity of Christ. We looked at uh, the two names of uh, uh, that is ascribed to God the Father and how it's ascribed to God the uh, Son in the New Testament, the names Theos and Kurios, or Kyrios, and hence we prove that Jesus Christ is deity. Uh, then we looked at, uh, we are looking at the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, you've studied uh, about the third person of the Trinity. We studied about uh, the Holy Spirit in the uh, your first semester. So it's just going to be a review of what all that you have learned. Uh, so in the doctrine of the Holy Spirit, uh, we first established the fact that the Holy Spirit is God. Uh, we know that uh, many people don't uh, uh, ascribe to him the, the, you know, the honor of him being God. They don't uh, worship him give him the reverence uh, that he is God, but uh, they also don't consider that the Holy Spirit is God. Uh, but we we established the fact that the Holy Spirit is God. Uh, we looked at uh, his nature of him being God, that he is omnipresent, he is omnipotent, he is omniscient, uh, he is eternal, and that he is sovereign, that he has all the nature that makes God, God. And uh, we saw that in the Holy Spirit as well. And hence we established the fact that the Holy Spirit is God. And this is something that we need to uh, uh, reiterate. We need to confess uh, because, you know, he's the one person of Trinity who's not given uh, the worship that is due to him, uh, the reverence, the honor uh, of him being God. Uh, so it's important that even as we fellowship with God the Father, even as we commune and fellowship with God uh, the Son, we also need to um, uh, fellowship and commune with uh, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, it's important that we give him the reverence, the worship, the honor that is due to who he is because he is God himself. And uh, we also looked at... Um, that the Holy Spirit is co-equal with God the Father and God the Son, and hence he is God. Um, and we establish the fact that um, also he is not a thing. He's not some force. Um, he's not a, a thing, so we don't address him as it. But he is a person. He has a personality. So wherever you read about the Holy Spirit, he's referred to as him or he. Okay, with the capital H, which is referring to not a human being, but uh, to God himself. Uh, so he's not just simply a force or an influence. Uh, he's not a dove. He's not fire. He's not just water. He's, uh, uh, he's God. But these are all symbols that uh, uh, represent the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, water, uh, a river, a fire. Uh, dove are all symbols that represent uh, or help us understand the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. And then we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit towards a sinner. Uh, Holy Spirit convicts a sinner of sin, righteousness, and uh, judgment. We read about this in John uh, chapter 16, uh, verse 8. 
where it says, and when he has come, uh, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. So Jesus is talking about uh, the Holy Spirit. And he says, when he has come, and you look at uh, the he here, uh, both the H is in capital. Um, it's talking about the Holy Spirit. So when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of uh, judgment. So has the Holy Spirit come into the world? Or is the Holy Spirit active in the world? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, when did uh, the Father promise to send the Holy Spirit? Or when did Jesus say that the Holy Spirit will come and indwell in uh, the believer's life forever? Jesus promised them that after his uh, his yes his death his ascension uh, his resurrection his ascension that uh, God the Father will send them the Holy Spirit and so we see the Holy Spirit is uh, active in the lives of uh, believers those who accept Jesus he comes and dwells in them for ever and uh, we know that uh, uh, you know the Holy Spirit was not just active after the day of on the day of pentecost but uh, holy spirit is god he has been active throughout uh, history time uh, from the very beginning uh, we see his work even in the old testament but uh, uh, you know we as a part of the new covenant are more privileged people in that uh, we have the holy spirit who lives and dwells in us forever but if you look at the Holy Spirit, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament over the lives of people, he would just come upon them for a certain period of time, uh, uh, for a certain assignment to be done, which God had purpose for that person. And once that person's assignment was done, complete, the Holy Spirit will leave them. But we, as part of the new covenant, are very privileged that in that that the Holy Spirit, uh, when we accept Jesus as our personal Savior, will come and indwell in us or live in us forever. He will never leave us nor uh, forsake us. Okay, and um, so we looked at the work of the Holy Spirit towards a sinner that He convicts the world of sin, uh, a righteousness uh, gets them to see themselves uh, in relationship uh, with the righteousness of Jesus. Uh, who lived as a man but yet was sinless and cause, will cause them to repent of their sin and accept Jesus. He also convicts the world of um, judgment. Okay, And we also saw this point that the Holy Spirit uh, testifies to people about um, Jesus. Now we will look at the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer. I have um, I just called out um, all of... Uh, uh, you know, uh, his works in the life of a believer. So we just kind of be uh, going through, it'll be kind of a review because you've already learned about this uh, in your course um, when you studied about Holy Spirit, about the Holy Spirit. And I also mentioned it in our last class on Wednesday. So, um, you know, the, what is the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer? When a person is born again, they are born again, uh, you know, by the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. And we read about this in John chapter 3, verses 3 and to 6, where Jesus said, uh, you know, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. So it's a capital S there, so it's meant referring to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, flesh gives birth to uh, flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to the Spirit. So if you look at the last uh, phrase in this verse, it says, but the Spirit, which is a capital S, gives birth to Spirit, which is a small s. So the capital S is the Holy Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit. Uh, so the Holy Spirit gives birth to Spirit. That means gives birth to the Spirit of a human being, a small s there, the Spirit of man. Um, so when we are born again, we receive the life of God in our spirit man, and we are born again by the work of the Holy Spirit in our uh, lives. And once we are born again, the Holy Spirit gives us the assurance that we have received salvation, that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Uh, we read about this in Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 16. Can one of you please read uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 to 16, please? 
Romans 8, 14 to 16. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bear witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. And if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Thank you, John Paul. So here we see that, uh, you know, um, we have uh, this, this, when you have been born again, you know, you received not a spirit that makes you a slave again, but to live in fear, but you received uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the spirit of sonship, you've been adopted to sonship. It, it says here, the spirit you received, the spirit here is the capital S, the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, whom you received as your Lord and Savior has brought about your adoption to sonship. And uh, hence we can cry, Abba, Father. We can call God the Father as our Father. Abba is a very intimate, uh, you know, name uh, or an intimate relationship that we share with the Father. And the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are children of God. So even if you look here, capital S, which is talking about the Holy Spirit himself testifies with our spirit, a small s, that we are God's children okay so uh, the holy spirit uh you know uh confirms or gives us the assurance that we are you know we have received salvation and that we are sons and daughters of god we are children of god the holy spirit also helps us to live a holy and sanctified life we already studied about this in the just uh, the previous classes so we are not going to uh talk about that it's mentioned in romans chapter 6 uh, chapter 7 and verse uh, chapter 8. Okay, The Holy Spirit gives us the knowledge of things that God has prepared for us. The Holy Spirit reveals the heart and the mind and the plans and the purposes of God to us. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 to 16 that um, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind or human mind has conceived the things that God has planned and prepared for those who love him. But it says, these are the things God has revealed to us by his spirit. So the Holy Spirit reveals the mind and the purposes of God to us because um, by our human minds, are, uh, we are not able to comprehend or understand, but the Holy Spirit reveals uh, uh, the plans and the purposes and the mind of God uh, to us. Because it's the Holy Spirit, uh, as the verses uh, go on here in First Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 2, it says the Holy Spirit uh, searches the deep things of God. Uh, no one knows um uh, the thoughts of God accept it, the Holy Spirit of God. Um, and uh, it says that, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit uh, re uh, reveals uh, the mind and the purposes and the things of God uh, to us. Okay, so verse 14 says, the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. So if you even want to understand uh, the deeper thoughts or the deeper revelations or the truth of God or the, the way God works, his will, the way he manifests himself, it's also only uh, the Spirit who reveals things uh, of God to us because by our own understanding, it will uh, look as foolishness to us, but the Spirit of God uh, will make known things of God uh, to us. The, spirit, the person with the spirit makes judgment about all things, but such a person is not subject to mere human judgments. Okay, so it says, who can know the mind of God? Uh, who can instruct him? Uh, it's only the Holy Spirit who can. It says we have the mind of Christ. So if we have bought, when we are born again, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us, he reveals the heart and the mind of God to us. And hence, we can say that we have the mind of Christ. Uh, we also know that the Holy Spirit teaches us uh, about all things. Uh, John chapter 14, verse uh, 26, uh, where Jesus says, The Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have said. The Holy Spirit reminds us 
of everything that uh, we read, we have heard, uh, we have been taught about, and the Holy Spirit also helps us to understand uh, when we read God's word. So when you're reading God's word, you can just say, Holy Spirit, even as I'm going to spend time reading um, the truths in your word, reveal uh, your deeper truths, reveal the deeper things, help me to understand, give me the discernment, uh, reveal the heart and mind of God uh, to me even as I read. Uh, and we also know that the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, uh, a very powerful and important uh, verses. Can somebody please read Romans chapter 8, verse 26 and 27, please? chapter 8 verses 26 and 27 the spirit helps us what we ought to pray for but the spirit himself in groan that words cannot express 27 and he who searches our heart knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for the saints in God's will Thank you, uh, Suti Kenu. So here we see that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. Sometimes we do not know what we need to pray for the situations that we're going through, challenges, the problems, uh, what we need to pray for the person that uh, has, us, has asked us to pray or we're praying for somebody else. Uh, we do not know, but we can quietly just ask the Holy Spirit to put his words in our mouth and uh, the Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us uh, when we are not able to intercede, when we are just, you know, weeping or crying for the presence of God, you know, the Holy Spirit himself intercedes for us. Um, and even when we pray in the Spirit, that is pray in tongues, uh, you know, uh, we do not know what to pray for, uh, for, a, uh, for a particular situation, for someone, but we can just, you know, if you have, uh, if you pray in tongues, it's a wonderful benefit of uh, you know, just praying at that time in tongues for yourself, for the person. Um, uh, because when you pray in tongues, you know, you pray according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit just puts in the words and you're praying in accordance with the will of God and praying rightly for that situation uh, according to what God is revealing in your spirit, man. So the Holy Spirit helps us to pray. Uh, so we can depend on the Holy Spirit to help us to pray and intercede on behalf of us. Okay. Uh, we also uh, know that the Holy Spirit uh, gives us the access to the Father in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 18. Uh, Paul is writing and talking about uh, Jews and Gentiles and he says that both the Jews and Gentiles have access to the Father by one Spirit. Okay, So we know that the Gentiles in the temple, they had the Gentile court, which was the outer court um, you know, but uh, when Jesus died, the veil of the uh, temple that, se that separated the holy place and the holy of holies was torn. That means we have access to the Father. We do not have to go through any saints or any angels or any pastor or any godly person, God, man. Uh, but we have direct access to the Father and we have the direct access to the Father by the one Spirit who makes us one. Okay, the Holy Spirit also enables us to hold on to the things that have been committed to us. Um, you know, uh, He helps us to hold on to uh, 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 our uh, position as sons and daughters, hold on to a position that we are uh, righteous in God's sight, we are justified. He reminds us of our standing, our calling. Uh, he helps us to fulfill the calling. Uh, we know the verses that say he will call you is faithful. He will do it for you. He who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it. Uh, it is also the power of the Holy Spirit that is in us will enable us uh, to complete what God has portioned for us, what God has called us, what God has uh, enabled us and trusted uh, in our uh, hands to do. Uh, the Holy Spirit will also uh, give us the creative skills, the ideas, the strategies that we need to uh, fulfill God's plan and purpose here on earth, to build his kingdom, to extend, uh, extend his kingdom here on earth. Um, he also helps us to, uh, he guards our salvation. We are sealed 
uh, you know, uh, with the Holy Spirit, we are sealed. That means, uh, you know, we have this uh, seal of ownership that we belong to uh, Christ. We are no longer slaves of Satan. And also all of the things that have been imparted to us, the spiritual gifts that have been imparted to us, the spiritual legacy, the spiritual blessings, uh, the gifts of the Spirit that has been uh, entrusted to us, the Holy Spirit enables us to hold on to these things um, that have been uh, uh, committed to us, okay? Uh, the Holy Spirit also enables us to obey God, to walk in His ways, even as He sanctifies us, cleanses us. Uh, he helps us to uh, purify us so that uh, we can be presented, uh, you know, without any blemish, spot, or uh, blame before the Most High God. The Holy Spirit also, uh, you know, uh, uh, enables us to endure uh, persecutions, uh, you know, when we are insulted uh, for Christ's name, the Holy Spirit, uh, it says in First Peter chapter 4, verse 14, if you are insulted because the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. Even when we are persecuted or we are brought before authorities, uh, we do not uh, have to be afraid of what we will answer them because the Holy Spirit will give us the answers. The Holy Spirit will speak to us. Uh, the Holy Spirit will help us to overcome uh, temptation uh, just like he helped uh, Jesus to overcome temptation. The Holy Spirit will also help us to preach, to teach. He gives us the anointing. Uh, that is required to preach and teach. He will give us the anointing uh, uh, that is required to flow in mighty signs, miracles, and wonders. Even as he, uh, you know, uh, manifests the gifts of the Spirit in and through our lives. Okay. So this is all the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. Now, before we look at... Uh, the gifts of the Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and how he ministers the gifts in us. Uh, do you have any questions about uh, uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life? Or any questions, any thoughts uh, on the Holy Spirit as a whole? Any doubts you have? We also know that the Holy Spirit is our comforter. He comforts us. He's a counselor. He counsels us. Uh, so, you know, if you have a problem, you have a difficulty, uh, before you run to any human being, you can go uh, and ask the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, who is your comforter, who is your guide, who is your counselor, uh, will counsel you counsel you in the decisions that you have to make, the choices you have to make, uh, what you need to speak, what you need to say, how you need to uh, act on the situation. So the Holy Spirit will guide and counsel you. He's your wonderful counselor. Anything else you'll want to add about the work of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life? You know, the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, we see the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, uh, uh, perfected the skills that were required for different people to do different things. Uh, when God told Moses to build the tabernacle, uh, you know, uh, uh, God uh, came upon uh, Bezalel uh, and the other person who was, uh, you know, given the uh, work of craftsmanship, of doing all of the work in the tabernacle. The Holy Spirit came upon them and the Holy Spirit enabled them to do exactly as God had planned and purposed. So the Holy Spirit gives us the skills. So if you want to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, 
good in acting, the Holy Spirit will and aid you with the skills. If you uh, want to be an excellent uh, a painter, uh, you know, uh, a cook, make uh, wonderful recipes, uh, uh, worship leader, any instrument you want to play, uh, whatever, you know, even if you are uh, just doing some carpentry work, electrician work, whatever, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit can uh, aid you with the skills to be uh, the best, to be um, uh, on top, because you can that way glorify God. And you can also ask the Holy Spirit through those skills to uh, minister into uh, uh, the lives of uh, people that you are, uh, you know, working for. So whether you're doing the carpentry work, you can say, God, I'm just making this chair or this bed, whoever sits on it or whoever sleeps on it, you know, um, let them just experience your peace or experience your power, experience your healing, uh, you know. So it's uh, it's just powerful. The Holy Spirit will just work, you know. So even if you're cooking, you know, uh, whoever eats this, God, if they're depressed, they're lonely, they're sick, uh, uh, they're, they're feeling, uh, comp contemplating suicide, just pray that this food will just, you know, just work in their lives, will just bring the peace of God, the joy, and, uh, you know, uh, this whole uh, aspect that uh, that there is a God who loves them and cares for them. So the Holy Spirit can even aid us with the skills and work through uh, the different creative skills that God has given us, the different vocations that he has called us to, uh, different areas that he has given us the creativity to to be excellent even if uh, you're painting you know you can say god even as i'm painting uh release a supernatural your supernatural work through this painting so uh, you know whoever uh, sees this painting just let them experience your peace your joy your healing deliverance freedom from bondages from strongholds uh, and we know we've seen uh, God work just through paintings, uh, through the worship times, you know, people have uh, just painted and uh, they've released a word of knowledge or word of wisdom and it's just ministered to people. Or you're just playing your instrument, uh, it can just uh, release demonic oppressions like uh, David played for uh, Saul. Uh, just experience peace. People have played musical instruments, people have been delivered, they've been healed. Uh, so you can ask the Holy Spirit to just release the supernatural through your natural skill, skills, through your natural giftings. Okay. So any and every area, the Holy Spirit can just uh, minister through you. So any questions? Nothing on uh, the work of the Holy Spirit in the believer's life? Okay, then we'll move on to the gifts and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so how many gifts of the Spirit are there? Nine. Nine gifts, thank you. When do we receive the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? When do we receive the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit? When we are born again. When we are born again, okay. Now we need to know, I, I don't know if you've been taught in the Holy Spirit class that then, you know, there are two aspects. There is an indwelling uh, presence of the Holy Spirit and there's an infilling power of the Holy Spirit. So these two aspects we need to know. There's the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit and infilling aspect of the Holy Spirit. So indwelling uh, work of the Holy Spirit or the presence of the Holy Spirit happens the moment we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. The infilling power of the Holy Spirit happens when we are uh, uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, and this can be, uh, you know, you don't have to have anyone lay hands upon you and pray for the baptism 
baptism of the Holy Spirit, you just desire to flow in the supernatural. You just desire to take God's word, uh, Jesus' word. He said that you can do greater things than what I have been doing. Uh, you want to take him at his word. You want to glorify Christ. You want to make his glory manifest here on earth. Uh, you can just say, God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And uh, when you desire that, the Holy Spirit will fill you. And when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, one of the first signs is that you speak in tongues. Uh, and also you receive the power of the Holy Spirit uh, to be his witnesses, like uh, the, the 120 believers uh, on the day of Pentecost. We read in Acts chapter 2 that, you know, they received, uh, the, uh, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, they spoke in tongues. And then after that, we see them doing mighty signs, miracles and uh, wonders. Uh, and they just, uh, you know, they just manifested all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So there are nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. It's uh, for us given for us in First Corinthians chapter twelve. First Corinthians chapter twelve basically talks about the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so if you like to turn to First Corinthians chapter twelve, all of you. Uh, so we saw the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit is when we accept Jesus Christ as our whole as our person Savior. The Holy Spirit comes and dwells in us forever. The infilling power of the Holy Spirit happens when we are baptized in the Holy Spirit. And um, the gifts of the Spirit is released at that time. Uh, so what are the gifts of the Spirit? It's given for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, uh, 9, and 10. It's the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Uh, it is uh, uh, the gift of uh, faith, the discerning of gift of discerning of spirits, uh, speaking in different kind of tongues, interpretation of tongues, uh, gift of prophecy, uh, working of miracles. Um, so these are uh, the uh, nine gifts of the the Holy Spirit will release to us uh, the moment that uh, we um, are baptized in the Holy Spirit. So are these gifts of the Spirit given to all believers? Yes, it is. Yes, it is given to all believers. Uh, we read this in 1 Corinthians uh, uh, chapter 12, verse uh, 7. It says, but the manifestation of the gift is given to each one for the profit of all. So all of us uh, can receive uh, the gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit. We can be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the main requisite for it is that you have to just be, uh, you know, just uh, you have to be born again, uh, you know, receive Jesus as your personal savior. And uh, when you do, you desire to flow in the gifts of the spirit. You desire to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. You pray for that. And when you pray, you know, the Holy Spirit will uh, baptize you. And one of the signs, you know, the outward signs that you know that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit is when you start speaking in tongues. Okay, that was what happened on the day of Pentecost. We also see uh, in other, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, inc uh, incidents uh, or narratives in Acts when um, Philip was in Samaria, where uh, Peter and John go and pray for the uh, the believers there who Peter did, uh, you know, uh, who preached there in Samaria. Sorry, Philip preached in Samaria. He did mighty signs and miracles and wonders. The whole town, many of them accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior. They were baptized. And uh, Peter and John hear the good news. They go there. They see that they have accepted Jesus. They've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, but they have not been baptized uh, so they, sorry, they've been baptized in water, but they have not been baptized in the Holy Spirit and they pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And then, you know, they start speaking in tongues. Uh, we also see that uh, uh, this happens in um, Paul's case where Ananias, you know, Paul, after his, uh, his encounter on the road to Damascus, uh, uh, Ananias goes and prays for him and his eyesight is uh, he receives back his eyesight and we see that Paul is also baptized in the Holy Spirit. And then he goes and uh, has takes his water baptism. Uh, we also see uh, this in, um, you know, Cornelius' house, whom uh, Peter goes, um, when he receives a vision, he goes to Cornelius' house and all the people in Cornelius' house, including Cornelius, are Gentiles. And uh, Peter is just 
preaching uh, the gospel to them and it says you know uh, they are cut in their heart that means they repent in their heart and immediately even before he gives them an altar call or he gets them baptized in water before all of that uh, even even before he thinks that they need to be prayed for the baptism of the holy spirit because they're gentiles they start speaking uh, they're baptized in the holy spirit so how do they know they're baptized in the holy spirit because it says i think in a, it's uh, the, this uh, uh, event is recorded for us in acts chapter um uh, uh 10 you know, it says that, um, uh, you know, they started um, uh, speaking in tongues. And how did uh, Peter and all of them, who, all the Jews who had gone along with Peter, to Cornelius' house, the Gentile, how did they know that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit? Because Peter is preaching there and all of these people start uh, speaking in uh, tongues. And and uh, Peter later on, when he goes back uh, to Jerusalem, he's, uh, you know, uh, uh, we read this, I think, in Acts chapter 11, and he's talking about, uh, you know, what happened at Cornelius' house. He says, uh, you know, uh, he says uh, that they start, they, they they experience the same way that we uh, experience on the day of Pentecost. That means uh, on the day of Pentecost, when the disciples started speaking in tongues, they spoke in uh, in different uh, human languages of different nations, and people who had gathered there from all nations were able to understand that these Gentiles were speaking in their own native languages from the places they had come from, and uh, that. Uh, you know, they were worshipping God, all of them were worshipping God, and the same thing happens here, and uh, so Peter understands the vision that he has, and uh, he says, who can stop uh, God's work? So we see that uh, even the Gentiles, you know, uh, uh, were blessed with uh, uh, with the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so it's not... Uh, uh, important that somebody lays hands on you you know it's just the work of the holy spirit you just desire it and the holy spirit will work in your life zilatoli's question is is speaking in tongues the only sign for baptism or there is also some other signs um yeah that is one of the uh outward signs is kind of like a uh, of a confirmation that yes uh we uh are baptized in the Holy Spirit, but sometimes it does not just happen immediately. Uh, you can pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, for somebody and you just believe that they have received it, uh, but they can start speaking in tongues maybe when they go back home or one day later or five days later. Uh, but yes, that is uh, one of the signs that we can say uh, that person is, uh, uh, you know, evidence sign that we can say that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we know that the gifts of the Holy Spirit is given to all believers. The gifts of the Spirit are the manifestation of the Spirit. Uh, what do we mean by the manifestation of the Spirit? It means that the Holy Spirit is expressing himself. That means, uh, 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 you know, when we manifest the gifts of the Spirit, whether it's through prophecy, speaking in tongues, interpreting of tongues, working of miracles, uh, discerning of uh, spirits, uh, it's the, you know, it's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It means that the, the, uh, the person, the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit is seen or felt very tangibly uh, through the supernatural works that are uh, taking place. So the gifts of the Holy Spirit are a manifestation or an expression of the Holy Spirit, his person, his presence, his power. Uh, and it's the operation of the gift of the Spirit is the Holy Spirit expressing himself in and through us. And uh, so we see that whenever the gifts of the Spirit are manifested, it all, the, the, you know, uh, it always brings glory to God. Okay, or uh, it says here in John chapter 16, verse 14, we read that the, all, the Holy Spirit will always uh, do things that will glorify Jesus. And we see this in the life of uh, uh, Jesus himself. Now, Jesus did, uh, uh, you know, mighty supernatural works. It was all through the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Um you know, Jesus was able to discern the spirits behind uh, the person, what they were speaking, what they were saying. He gave a word of wisdom, knowledge. He did mighty uh, miracles. Um, 
And all of this was the manifestation of the spirit. And we see that the end result was, if you read the gospels, you know, uh, uh, what did people do? You know, people did not fall. Uh, of course, some of them, uh, you know, thanked Jesus. They fell at his feet. But we see that they gave glory to God. They all glorified uh, God. They all thanked God for his work in uh, in their lives, in their midst. So uh, when Jesus, you know, did mighty signs, miracles, and wonders, it led to uh, people... Uh, glorifying God and when the Holy Spirit makes himself manifest in and through our lives through the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit you know people will glorify God they will glorify uh, Jesus now why are the gifts of the Spirit given why are the gifts of the Spirit given for the edification of believers Yes, thank you. It's given for uh, the edification of the church and also that, you know, God can be glorified. Uh, I remember saying that, you know, uh, God created us so that we can manifest his glory. One way that we can manifest the glory of God here on earth is through uh, the nine gifts of the Spirit when the Holy Spirit manifests himself through us, through the nine gifts. So the gifts of the Spirit are given for the edification of the church or for the, to edify uh, people, to build them up in their faith, um, to, to show them that God loves them, He cares for them, He's interested in their lives, and also it, will, it brings glory uh, to uh, Christ Himself. Okay? Um, so we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, that the manifestation of the Spirit is given for each one for the profit of all. Uh, and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Can somebody read that, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse with you since you are eager to try to excel in gifts that build up the church. <laughs> Thank you. So here it says that even as you are zealous for the spiritual gifts, or even as you desire to flow in the spiritual gifts, let it be for the edification of the church that you seek to excel. Now, uh, the church at Corinth, you know, uh, all of them uh, just mightily uh, manifested all the gifts of the Spirit. So, uh, you know, every time they came on uh, to a church service on uh, the day they worshipped, you know, they all were ready with the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, prophecy, uh, they were ready to uh, interpret the tongues that was spoke that had been spoken. Uh, so they were all very passionate, very zealous. They were flowing mightily. Uh, but uh, you know, Paul in this chapter uh, was four, uh, chapter 12, 13, 14, He's talking about the gifts. He's saying uh, it's good that all of you desire uh, and are zealous for the spiritual gifts. But when you do it, you need to do it in an orderly way so that it can bring edification for the church and will not just uh, then there will not be chaos in the uh, church, okay, or uh, in the in the body of believers. Uh, so it is important for us, even as we desire to manifest the gifts, uh, that it is for us to serve God, uh, to serve people, and also to bring glory to uh, Christ, because the gifts that are given to us is for the profit of all, is for the edification of the church. Um, the gifts of the Spirit is not given for us to make us look good or for our self-proportion or to show how spiritually mature or spiritually sensitive we are to God or how prayerful we are. Uh, it is also not to show uh, that we are better than other believers, but uh, let us remember that even as uh, you know, some of us flow in the gifts of the Spirit, or some of you are desirous for uh, you to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, to flow in all the gifts of the Spirit, that it is not for your self-promotion, not for you to look good or super spiritual, uh, like Superman, uh, you know, but uh, 
it is for the profit of all and for the edification of the uh, church. So uh, how does the gift of the Holy Spirit flow or manifest in us? We need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Um, and uh, our desire should be that people are being benefited uh, and people are being um, edified. Okay. Um, and so Paul is instructing uh, the believers at Corinth, even as all of them in the church flowing mightily in the gifts of the Spirit, he tells them that, you know, do everything uh, for the building of the uh, people. Like he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, he gives a, 14, he gives an example of himself in verses 18 and 19. He says, I thank God that uh, Paul says, I thank God that, that he, that I speak in tongues more than all of you. Yet in the church, I would rather speak five words with my understanding that I might teach others also than 10,000 words in a tongue. So what Paul is saying is I speak in tongues. Yes. But when I come to church, I kind of restrain the use of speaking in tongues. Uh, why? So that I can speak in a language that people can hear and understand and be edified. So also when you are manifesting the gifts, you know, do it in a way that will bring edification and not chaos in the uh, church. Okay. And uh, that is what he also talks again in verse 26. Uh, like I said, you know, the, the church at Corinth were very zealous and very eager to, uh, you know, share whatever uh, uh, word of wisdom, knowledge, prophecy they have received. So he says, whenever you come together, this is in chapter 14, verse 26, says, whenever you come together, each of you has a psalm, has a teaching, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. So Paul is saying, good. You know, but when you do it, do it uh, for the edification of the church. That means all of you don't do it together. Uh, take turns. When you finish, wait, give a chance to others so that people can hear, so that the church can be uh, edified. Okay. So we see that the gifts of the Spirit are for the edification uh, of the uh, church and also will bring glory to uh, Christ. Uh, We'll stop here. Any of you have any questions? On the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Um, then I have a doubt. I want you uh, to clarify this doubt. Like, uh, I'm a bit confused there. Okay, like, uh, uh, when a person is born again, like, uh, does he receive, uh, he receive all the gifts, all the blessing in Christ? And that include the, you know, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And thus, uh, that gift manifests after the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or when a person is born again, then only that gift comes and start to manifest. Um, when a person is uh, born, good question, Zelotori. So when a person is born again, uh, yes, we uh, receive the life, the nature of God. We receive the Holy Spirit who comes and indwells in us. The Holy Spirit also works in and through our lives. And uh, yes, uh, you know, we can, uh, you know, uh, some of them are so ignorant about uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They do not know what is the gifts. But we see that, uh, you know, when a, a, a born again believer prays for somebody else and believes with faith in their heart for healing, the person is healed. Uh, they can also, uh, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit can also uh, give them a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, a prophecy. Um, uh, that they can minister to others, but you know, uh, to receive that, uh, 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 to flow mightily or fully in all of those gifts in a very, uh, in a very powerful way, is when uh, they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, and baptism of the Holy Spirit is not, you know, uh, something that is uh, we can say is like a, something that is a big uh, uh, fun fair thing or something that is, uh, uh, you know, something that is uh, a big uh, uh, event that happens. Yes, it is something big that happens in a person's life, but it can also be something that you just quietly pray in your heart. You just uh, desire to flow mightily, uh, move mightily in science, miracles and wonders. 
do the same works that Jesus has done. You just desire that, and you know, uh, you will. Uh, the Holy Spirit will just, uh, you, uh, you know, manifest all of the nine gifts. You will be baptized in the Holy Spirit at that time. You can also go for the baptism of the Holy Spirit when the church uh, classes, when the church has, and can have somebody prayed for. Uh, but when you're born again, yes, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells in you. Uh, the Holy Spirit will work in you in that you would, um, you know, you can uh, pray for people, they can be healed. But we see that happening in a much powerful way uh, after uh, you are uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because we see that in the, uh, uh, you know, the biblical thing is that, uh, you know, when uh, Jesus, he, he first called the 12 and he said, you know, go and preach and teach and baptize, uh, heal the sick, raise the dead, uh, cleanse the lepers. And uh, so the 12 went and they came back and they did mighty signs and miracles and wonders. And they were not even born again. They were not even uh, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Uh, but we see that... Um, uh, you know, um, uh, the 70 after that, Jesus, uh, you know, uh, sent out the 70. They also came back and they said, you know, the demons, uh, uh, we just take the name of Jesus and the demons shudder and shiver and flee. And they were so excited about all that, uh, you know, God had enabled them to do when they, when they were sent out in twos. Uh, but um, we see that, you know, when the, the father brought the son who was uh, uh, sick and who was uh, uh you know, with had epilepsy and was demon possessed. He said the disciples could, they prayed, but the disciples could not uh, do anything. And Jesus uh, rebuked them for their lack of faith. But uh, Jesus went ahead and healed that boy. Uh, so, but we see that after they, you know, on the day of Pentecost, when they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, uh, they did mighty uh, signs, and miracles, and wonders. So for for us to do greater things than what Jesus said that uh, he is even done to do given those greater mighty miracles, the supernatural work of God. Yes, we need, uh, uh, you know, to be baptized the Holy Spirit. We need the nine gifts and we can flow mightily in the nine gifts and we can do the supernatural work of God. Did that help? Zilatoli? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. well, that was helpful. So that means... Um... So what Sorry, uh, it's already time for your class, for your next class. I don't want to keep uh, some of you waiting. For those of you who want to leave class, you can leave. I'll just uh, hear out Zilotoli's question and then uh, maybe she can leave class. Yes, go ahead, Zilotoli. Okay, uh, so men, so when a person is born again, it's like the gift is already there, but uh, in a greater way, they, they will manifest when they receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, um. Yes, the uh, not all the gifts are not there, but they receive it when they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit manifests Himself in and through them. Yes, in small ways. Okay, okay. thank you, ma'am. Yeah, that's yes. clear. Okay, okay. Thank you, everyone, for uh, joining class today. Have a, a blessed uh, day and a blessed weekend, and I'll see you on Monday. Okay, thank you.